This is not your father's Costa Rica. When I got here in 1991, we didn't have iPhones and Bitcoins, no Waze or Google Maps. If you wanted a date, you actually had to go to a public place to meet women. There was no quick way to get to Ghetto Beach until January 27, 2010, when Oscar Arias inaugurated the new Route 27. 77 kilometers of highway designed in the 1970s, stretching from Mata Redonda, San Jose, to Puerto Caldera and Punta Arenas. Over budget and 32 years overdue, the funding for this project mysteriously disappeared from public coffers three times. Since completion, the inadequate and poorly designed highway has been in constant state of disrepair. Landslides, flooding, and the road sinking more than three meters in some places have been a few of the issues. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Thanks for your support. Like and subscribe on your way in. All right, let's do this. Offshore and off the grid. Here we go again. Today, Costa Rica remains a third world country with first world prices. First world aspirations with third world infrastructure. Nicaragua, our neighbor to the north, is the third poorest country in the Western Hemisphere after Honduras and Haiti, and they have a superior road system. The cost of living in Costa Rica is the highest in Latin America. Shopping for groceries at Automercado could give you a financial stroke. The price of gasoline is expensive and the cost of vehicles here is twice what you would pay in the United States. The cost of electricity here is three times what you would pay in the state of Florida. Renting a modern apartment in a respectable neighborhood will cost you about 1200 US a month. The bureaucracy is brutal and the infrastructure is bad. So why are we here? The short answer is for two reasons, the weather and the women. The temperature rarely goes above 78 degrees Fahrenheit and it rains for six months out of the year. One quickly adapts to two seasons and learns to take a siesta in the afternoon when it's raining. Here's where the women come in. If exploring the hedonistic pleasures of the flesh is your favorite hobby, this is the place to be. There are various flavors to choose from, including Nicaraguan, Colombian, and other South American varieties. They are all still shapely and feminine, unlike their North American counterparts, who opt to impersonate Mack trucks and bulldozers. Of course, these girls are dangerous, and they do have their quirks, but that's part of the fun. And even if they speak enough English to get your attention, it is incumbent upon you to learn to be fluent in Spanish so that you can understand what they're saying in front of you when they're talking to their girlfriends. Again, learning just the words is not enough. You need to have a grip on the culture so that you can understand the more subtle colloquial phrases. In the Latino world, girls have a coming out party at the age of 15. After that, all bets are off. By the age of 24, it is not unusual for a Latina to have two or three kids with ADD, all different daddies. So how do you negotiate relationships with these seductive sirens? You live amongst them, but not with them. Pura Vida is not unconditional, and Costa Rica is not for everyone. There is an old adage that suggests to leave Costa Rica with one million dollars, you need to bring two. 80% of expats are gone within 18 months. Don't take advice from your buddy at the bar. You can't make a 304 a housewife.